Let's see, the company had to dial back the ray trace. Aw, oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me with this sh Welcome back to Gamer Meld. Ray tracing has been a huge topic as of late, thanks to the announcement of NVIDIA's RTX GPUs, and it's certainly interesting. I mean, the difference between rasterization and ray tracing can be mind-boggling at times, and while it's technically just more realistic lighting and shadows, it impacts everything from the way a material looks to adding serious depth to your environment. So far, the problem with using this lighting method is simply how much processing power it takes to render. That is, until now. NVIDIA's upcoming RTX line of graphics cards are built on the Turing architecture, which includes cores specifically designed to aid in ray tracing and AI, so the more traditional CUDA cores can handle most everything else. At least, uh, that's what we had hoped, but apparently it's not that simple. This leads me into the story. In a roundtable interview at Gamescom with DICE's technical director, Christian Holmes Holmquist? Holmquist? I I'm really not sure it's this. Right, right there. Quite a bit was said about the developer's implementation of ray tracing in Battlefield 5. The conversations were documented by Tom's hardware, but what I want to focus on is just a couple parts. The first of which is disheartening. In the interview, Tom's hardware states that they're targeting, yes their goal for Battlefield 5 with ray tracing is 60 FPS at 1080p. Now hold on for a second, I can already hear you typing. No, resolution isn't everything, and yes, 1080p is fine. Hell, I just got my first 4K monitor, though it's the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. And yes, it's an optional setting, but users who pay over $1,100 for a GPU almost certainly have a 4K 1440p or ultra-wide monitor. And spending all that to either A, not fully utilize the monitor you paid for, or B, turn off the setting for the main selling point of said $1,100 GPU is a little ridiculous. And it's not just in Battlefield either. There were early reports of Tomb Raider's demo getting 33 to 48 FPS at 1080p, but most assumed that was due to having little time with the cards. Well, apparently it's not. Remember, this is DICE's goal. The goal for release, for beyond release, etc. So while I know they only got the cards a couple weeks prior to the demo, they're clearly not that hopeful in extra time making a big difference. Now, with all of that said, don't get me wrong, this is still an incredible leap in graphics, and while AMD does have similar technology, NVIDIA is first to truly incorporate it into games. I'm just concerned it may have been done too soon. Also, there's a slight positive when it comes to this article. In the same interview, DICE's director made it clear that they are aware of gamers utilizing more cores instead of higher clocks. Basically, they're optimizing it for even six cores. Whether turning ray tracing off still utilizes those cores or not wasn't said, but either way, developers are aware that high core count CPUs are becoming a bigger deal, and they're willing and able to tap into them. Lastly for today, it looks like AMD's Vega 20 GPUs will include XGMI, a high bandwidth interconnect made to combat NVIDIA's NVLink. It was found in AMD's latest GPU Linux driver, and while Vega 20 more than likely won't ever be a gaming GPU, there's a chance that if NVIDIA's RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti do in fact come within VLink, then AMD could be preparing to challenge them on multi-GPU support. Of course, just like NVIDIA, this could be limited to the higher tier cards due to the cost of the interconnect. We shall see though. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Is ray tracing worth a pretty massive hit to FPS? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, definitely don't forget to subscribe for all things gaming hardware. And as always, have a great day.